going to show you how to make this bracelet. We are going to make little segments like this of cubic right angle weave embellished and then we are going to string them together with pearls in between. Now of course you can string it any way you want. You can also, I've made this one, you can also do this in a little longer segment. This is with three millimeter bicones and 11 O seed beads. This is a little smaller version. This is with 8 O seed beads and 4 millimeter bicones and 3 millimeter bicones as an embellishment on the cubic right angle weave itself. And then I just made it all the way around, so I made four segments. Now, if you want to, you can make five segments and you can string them on an elastic and make it a bangle if you would like. I just don't usually like using elastic because it can break. So you have to get a very heavy elastic and um, tie it very well and glue the little knot and see if that worked for you. This one I did with a toggle. Let me show you what it looks like on. This is what it looks like on the wrist. If I can get my toggle here. So that's what it looks like on the wrist. It's really very pretty. Came out really nice. My pictures don't do it justice. I tried to take pictures of it in several different ways and it just really doesn't do it justice. But that's really pretty. And then eventually I'm going to make this matching ring for us too. And I will do that during the week and get it up also. So um, that's what we're going to make today. And you can do it either way, or you can just do the the cubic right angle weave all the way around in segments. Um, I would just do some plain right angle weave in between, or these sections here that are just embellished. You can do this so many different ways. So anyway, that's what we're going to make today. Let's go ahead and look at what we'll need okay, for, for this, this project. project today. You will need 15-0, 11-0, and 8-0 seed beads. I am using Toho in all three. This is the Starlight Galvanized Gold Tone. This is Antique Gold, or Antique Bronze. And this one is Gold Bronze Metallic. And like I said, they're all Toho. Then I'm going to use three millimeter and four millimeter bicones. This one is Moonlight in the Swarovski line. This is Emerald. I'm going to use a thread zapper today because I finally broke down and bought one. I keep, I wanted to get one for a long time and I kept forgetting. So if you want to, you can use a lighter and thread and uh, scissors if you'd like. I'm going to use a thread zapper. I'm going to use size two crimp beads in the Beetle Online. Those are my favorite. You can use any crimp bead you want to use, but this is what I am using. I'm going to use a gold tone toggle clasp about about an inch big. I'm going to use some six millimeter round glass pearls. I'm also going to use a regular size crimp plier or crimp tool and some wire cutters and a size 10 beading needle and some size 10 or some 10 pound nanofill. Now I would like to use smoke colored fire line with this, but because I'm using a clear crystal, I'm going to go ahead and use my white. Um, see how it turns out. I'm, I'm going to cover all the little sections where you see the thread anyway with um, embellishments, so hopefully this will be fine, but this is what I'm going to use. You can also use eight or 10 pound fire line. I would say six or eight pound fire line with this project too because you're going to be using 15 oz seed beads, so you don't want to get too big with the diameter of your thread. Eight or 10 pound nano fill will be perfect too. We will also be using soft flex or something similar, beading wire. This is soft flex, it's medium size, and I like it because it's just the right size to use with my size two crimp beads. It's heavy enough to hold things in place, but not so heavy that I can't string smaller beads if I want to. So we're going to use about 12 inches of beading wire, and like I said, you can use something equivalent. 
you can use a beetle on um, beading wire or tiger's tail or whatever you have on hand. Okay, let's go ahead and get started making little segments of cubic right angle weave. Okay, so starting cubic right angle weave is the hardest part. So I'm going to try to do this as clearly as I possibly can. And um, hopefully you can all catch on the first time around. However, if you would like to reference the Bling Bangle tutorial on this channel or on my GGC's beginning channel, there is a cubic red angle weave necklace. Either one of those are more detailed with the stitch and using bigger beads, easier to see and follow. So you may want to try those first before you begin this if you have not done cubic right angle weave before. We're going to start by picking up four 8 seed beads onto the needle. So go ahead and pick up four and then bring it down to the end of the thread. You don't have to leave a long tail but you need enough to tie a knot and to hold on to. Now we're going to go back into the first bead we put on from the tail side and pull these into one unit of right angle weave, like so. Now we're going to sew back through all of these. I'm going to get close for this first cube here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go down into each bead. When you're doing right angle weave, it's nice to uh, do one bead at a time as you sew through it. Sometimes I'll grab more than one, but you really should do one bead at a time because it retains the shape you want better. Now, when you get to the point to where your um, working thread and your tail thread are in the same spot on the unit here, then you're going to want to tie them into a knot. So just do an overhand knot and tie them between the beads, like so. Just make sure that your thread goes down between your beads and not on top of them. Tighten that as much as you can so it doesn't slip. and straighten your beads out. So you have a little unit that looks like this. The neater your unit, the easier it is to distinguish the next few stitches here. This is, with cubic right angle weave, we are going to make a square. So with our square, we will need a bottom of the square, a top of the square, and four walls, or, or four sides, or what I like to refer to as floor, ceiling, and walls. So this is going to be my floor. These are my base unit beads. I'm going to go into one of these base unit beads because I'm between them right now where I tied my knot. You're always going to work from the base unit beads. Now we're going to pick up three 8 seed beads onto the thread. Each unit that we're building for each side of the box or the room um, will have four beads in it. We've already got one that we're coming out of. That will be our first bead. We're going to pick up three and then we're going to go into the opposite side of the bead we're coming out of and we're going to pull these into a unit. So now we have two units. This will stand up as a wall once we get going here. Then we're going to go into the next base unit bead right there. Always go down into the next bottom bead, floor bead, um, bottom of the box bead, whatever you want to call it, base unit. Now we have this wall here that we're going to connect to and this is the bottom of our room or our box. So we only need two beads so that we will have another wall side here and then the ceiling here. So we're going to pick up two, we're going to travel over and go through the top of this bead on the wall on the second unit we made and then back down into the bottom bead, the floor bead. And we're going to pull these into a wall like so. So now we have two walls. Now we're going to turn our little square and we're going to go into the next bottom unit bead, base unit bead. I'm trying to hold this so you can see and it's not much to hold on to. Now <clears throat> these two are my top beads which I'll join together to make a ceiling. This is my base unit bead, this is my wall bead. So now I need a wall here, a ceiling here, and connect to this wall. So I'm going to pick up two beads to make my four since I have two to work in. Now I'm going to go over to the top of this bead and go down through it 
and then go through my base unit bead. And I'll pull this around and as I do this I can pull my thread tight like so and then it's cupping it up into a square. Now this looks really confusing when you start your first unit. Just keep track of where you've been and it'll be easier. Now I'm coming out of this base unit bead after making this wall. I have to go into this base unit bead here. My very last bead on my base unit. So I'm going to go through it. And as you can see, I have two walls already and a floor. So I have to travel up, I have to connect these two walls to my floor and my ceiling. So I am in the base unit. I'm going to go up the wall and connect it. So I don't have to pick up anything but one bead this time. So it's three, then it's two, and then it's one. It's two twice. Now, at picking up beads. Now, we're coming out of this wall. We're going to go into this wall and we're going to go down through it. Pick up one bead, go down through this bead here. Now I've connected my two walls with the ceiling and I need to connect this wall to the floor. So I'm going to go down into my base unit bead again. Now I'm coming out of this base unit bead. I have to climb up to the top and connect them together because my ceiling beads are just loose. So I'm going to go up through this wall here. I'm coming out of the base unit here. I'm going to go up here. And then I am going to come through all four of these top beads and join them together. And just pull and get a little tension. And this is my first unit. Now, as we stack the units on top of each other, it'll get a lot neater and you'll be able to distinguish your squares much better. This first one just kind of looks like a blob, but it really literally is a cube. You can see I have one wall here, one wall here. All the way around, I have a unit of four beads. So I have a unit here, a four, a unit here, a four, all the way around. And I'm coming out of the top bead here after joining them together. Now this will become the base unit beads that will work our next unit of cubic right angle weave. So I'm going to pick up three 11 or 80 seed beads. My first wall, I need to add three. My fourth bead is here. As we work through, then we will add two, two, and one. So three, go into the opposite side. And now you have your first wall. Now you're going to go into the next bead here, the floor bead in your base unit. Pull tight. Now you have this bead will be your bottom. This will be the side bead that will connect to your next wall here. So you're going to pick up two 8 seed beads. You're going to go into this wall bead and this bottom bead. So you will have the side of your box. Now you can see that it's standing up two sides of the box. Now I have to go into my next base unit bead. Always go into the floor or the bottom of the box. Then pick up two 80 seed beads because we've got the floor and we've got the wall on this side so we only need to make the wall here and the top. So we're going to go through this wall bead and this floor bead here and pull them around. Now we have a wall bead, a floor bead, and a wall bead. So we're going to go into the floor, we're coming out of this wall bead, we're going to go into the floor bead. Then we're going to connect this wall bead right here. And keep good tension, as good as you can anyway. And then pick up one bead for the top of the box. Now you have to sew around this entire unit 
to get back up to the top after you put this on. So you've got one bead, you're coming out of this bead, we're going to join this bead here, and then we have to go into the floor, join the wall to the floor here, and then we'll go back up this wall here, and now we have to join the top beads together. So we've got a little cube, but the top is still loose. So we're coming out of this wall bead, we're going to go into these top ceiling beads or top of the box beads, however you want to put it. You're either building a room or you're building a box, it doesn't matter. See it as a square and it'll be easier. Now we're joining all four of these beads together, just sew around all of them. And pull tight. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, I have two units of right angle weave, or of cubic right angle weave anyway. You can see it's kind of like, builds like a skyscraper with little windows in it, as you can see it. Now this would have been prettier with darker thread, but like I said, I'm going to embellish them all so it doesn't really matter. Now, we are going to change up the stitch, well not the stitch, we're just going to change up our beads. We've got two units of cubic right angle weave with our 8-0's. Now we're going to move in to crystal on the top and the rest will be 8-0's. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up three 4 millimeter bicone crystals. We're coming out of this bead here. We're going to go into the opposite side of it. Now we are building our wall here and this wall is going to be the crystal wall. Now we're going to go into the next floor bead. So you've got three crystals here. You're going to make sure you go into the next 8-0 on your base units here. And turn. Now we have to build a wall to connect with the crystal wall. So we're going to pick up two 8-0 seed beads. We've got the floor, we've got this side of the wall, now we need a wall and a seat or in the top. So we're going to go here and we're going to go into the floor unit here. It's like we're building a window into our little room here. Now we've come around, we're going to go into this bottom bead right here. Always go into your base beads and then pick up two 80 seed beads. We're going to use this bead and this bead. So go down into this one and pull. And you'll just have to try to retain your tension the best you can. It's kind of sloppy at first here. Then go back down into the floor bead here just to join them all together. Now, as you can see, I have my little wall. Now, I am going to go into my fourth wall. So I'm going to go into the bottom bead first, the base bead, the floor bead, the bottom of the box, whatever you want to call it. And then go up a wall bead, because you have your two wall beads here. You have a crystal wall bead and you have your 8 wall bead. Go up into the wall bead from the floor and pull. And then pick up a top bead and go into your wall bead on this side here. From the top, going down. And then you have to go back into your base unit bead or your floor bead to connect those. Now you have to sew back up to the top to join your ceiling. So we're going to go up here through this crystal bead and pull tight. Then we're going to go through the crystal bead and then the three 8 seed beads and it's best if you do one at a time so it retains a nice square shape turning corners instead of squishing them together. And we're going to go back into our crystal bead. 
Now, when we make our crystal units, it's always helpful to start in your crystal and make your crystal wall first. It's just less confusing. I find it to be anyway. So now we have made a unit with just the crystal on top here. So what we're going to do is we are going to go pick up three of our crystals. So we're going to make our crystal wall first, like I said. We're starting in the floor unit, because this is now our floor unit here. So we're starting in the floor. We're going to go around and build our first crystal wall, our big window in our room here. And pull this around, like so. Now we're going to go into the floor bead. So right here, bottom. Pull these tight as you get through it. And then we need to, we have a crystal wall, we have our floor, and we need a wall and a ceiling. Pick them up, go through the wall, go through the floor, like so, and pull them down. Then go through the next floor bead. Then you are going to pick up three, or two, excuse me, eight O's, because you're going to build from this wall and this floor, you need another wall and a ceiling. So two beads. We're going to go into the wall bead here, the floor here. And now we have a complete wall. Now we're going to go into the next floor bead. This is our fourth unit, and on our fourth, as we join everything together, we only need to pick up one bead. So you come through the bottom floor from this wall bead, come up through the crystal, pull tight, and then pick up your top bead or your ceil ceiling bead, however you want to see it. We're coming out of this bead, right here, this crystal bead, we need to go into this wall bead and then the floor and then back up through the crystal to join this entire wall together. So let's add our top bead, go through the side bead here, pull it into a square, then go into the bottom bead to join this completely together. So go into that one, then go into your crystal, climb up the wall to get to the ceiling to close it together. Now we're coming out of the crystal here. We're going to join all four of these top beads. So I'll go into this 8-0 here, this 8-0, this 8-0, and then into my crystal bead. This time, we want to make another unit. As you can see, this, this unit has four crystal beads in it. This unit has three crystal beads and an 8-0. So this time, we want to transition back into the regular units with the 8-0 seed beads without crystal. So the way we're going to do it is we are going to pick up two, or actually one crystal, one 8-0, and one crystal. So crystal, 8-0, crystal. Then we're going to go back into the crystal on the opposite side and pull this down. Turn your piece over, go into your floor bead on the next side here on your wall. Now we're going to build a wall here, a ceiling, and connect to this crystal. So two 8 o seed beads. Coming out of this 8 right here, we're going to go down into the crystal from the top and then through the floor again. Pull this around and now we have a wall. Go into the next floor bead. Pick up two 8 seed beads. You have a wall here, a floor here. We're going to put in a wall and a ceiling. So we'll go through this bead and this bead. Pull them tight, bring it around, put a little tension on it, and there's your wall on the bottom side here. 
of your bracelet anyway. Then we have to go into the next floor bead here. And we have to join this crystal and this bead with the ceiling bead. So we're going to go up through the crystal. We're going to pick up our top bead, go through this side of the wall we're building, and then down through the floor again, up through the crystal, and join the four beads on top. And this top one will now be our base unit for our next two units of 80 seed beads. Okay, so I just went an extra one. Oops. All right. So now I'm coming out of the 80 seed bead next to the crystals, and I'm going to start making two units of 80 seed beads. So I'm going to pick up one, two, three. So I don't know why I said two units. That doesn't make any sense. I'm just going to make my wall here. Ignore that weird comment I made. We're going to go through here and build a wall. And there we have it. Now we're going to go through the next floor bead here and build a wall on the side. Pick up two 80 seed beads. You're coming out of the floor. We're going to cross over to the seat, to the wall and back through the floor. Then we're going to go into this floor bead in the back here. And we're going to pick up two beads to make a wall. We've got this bead here as our side of our wall. We're going to go back into it and then into the floor. And pull. Now we've got most of that box made. We just need to go into the floor bead of this side here, come up the wall on this side, pick up a NATO seed bead for the ceiling, come through the other wall on this side, pull, go down through the floor. Now this actually turns out a lot cuter, I think, in 11 OC beads and 4 millimeter um, with 11 OC beads and 3 I think it's prettier just because it's littler but it's easier to learn and bigger and most people have 4 millimeters more than 3 millimeters but that we're doing it because it's bigger so you can see it better now we are going to we're coming out of this bead in the bottom here right here we have to go up to the top and drain our top beads. Made our last wall, so let's go up and join the top beads. Try to get a little tension on that. This stitch can get really sloppy if you don't get good tension. Okay, and then come back through this one. I have to join this again. It's just not tight enough. If you feel like you need to go around it more than once, that's fine. I just didn't get enough tension on there. And now I'm back in my top bead where my crystal is, like so. And I'm going to make one more unit of right angle weave, or of cubic right angle weave. Pick up three 80 seed beads. We're coming out of this side of this bead. We're going to go into the opposite side and bring our three beads down. Now we'll go into the next base unit bead. We have two beads already on our piece, so we'll pick up two to make the four for this particular unit. We'll go through this bead and this bead. Now we'll turn go through the base unit bead. 
but we have two beads to make our unit. We need four, so we'll pick up two. We'll come through this bead on this side and through our base unit bead and pull. Now, this unit is almost complete because we have three beads. So we'll go into the base unit bead We'll go into the side bead here. Then we'll go, we'll pick up one bead to create the top unit. Go into this side unit and the base unit again, or base bead again, like so. Now we're going to crawl up to the top. So we're in this bottom bead here, as this unit is concerned. We're going to go up to the top, crawl all the way to the ceiling here and just join them all together. And this is what we have. Now, we are going to start embellishing this. So I'm coming out of this side bead here. I'm going to sew all the way around to this little top bead here. And instead of including the crystal in the unit like we did with these, we're going to put crystals on top of the units just to create a different dimension to it. A little different look. So, now we're going to use some 15 0 seed beads and some 3 millimeter bite cones. I'm going to back off a little bit. This is what I have coming out of this top bead right here. Now I'm going to pick up a, that's an 11 0. Get that out of there. I'm going to pick up a 15 0, a 3 millimeter bicone crystal, and a 15 0 seed bead. Just a bit closer again so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm coming out of this bead right here. And maybe even a little closer. Now you can see I have a unit of right angle weave right here on top. You can see one, two, three, four beads. I'm coming out of this one on this side. I'm going to go into the one opposite. On the opposite side, I'm coming out of. So I'm coming out here. I'm going to go into here. So right here, I've got a 15 0, a 3 millimeter bicone, and a 15 0. And I'm going to pull this down like so. Now I'm going to pick up another 15 0 a 3 millimeter bicone and a 15 0. Oops, 10 and just flipped them all off. So, well, not flipped them off, but you know what I mean. Okay, coming out of this side, I'm going to find the opposite bead and go into the opposite side right here, like so. Now, I'm going to sew down, so I'm coming out of this bead right here. I'm going to sew down into the bead on the side of the unit right here so that I can travel over to the other side of my little creation here. So I'm going to go through this bead here, right here. I want to follow my thread path, so I'm going to go here. Then I'm going to go here. Then I'm going to go up through my crystal. So I'm just sewing, and it's pulling my unit together to making it tighter. So I'm just sewing through my units exactly how I put them on. And I'm coming out of this crystal. I'm going to go down into this 8 seed bead. Then I'm going to go down into this 8 seed bead. Oops. Sorry about that then up through this 8 here. Now I'm going to come through, I'm going to turn my piece and come through the top, right here. And I'm going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead, a 3 millimeter bicone, and a 15 0 seed bead. I'm coming out of this um, 8 0 seed bead right here. I'm going to find the opposite 8 0 seed bead and go in on the opposite side from which I'm coming at a, out of this side. So I'm coming out here, I'm going to go in here. And 
and then I'm going to do the same thing again in my very last unit. I'm going to pick up a 15O, a 3mm bicone, and a 15O. And then I am going to, I'm coming out here, I'm going to go into the opposite side on the very first base unit we made, right next to my tail here. And pull this embellishment down, like so. Okay, so now we are coming out of this 8 seed bead after putting on our last embellishment here. We're going to cut this tail down just to get it out of the way. I'm going to just use my thread zapper and get it out of my way. Like so. Now, I am going to sew around this bottom unit, the very first one we made, placing 11 o seed beads in between it to finish this little bottom part off and make our segment nice and neat that we can string onto our bracelet. So I'm going to pick up some 11 o seed beads. I'm coming out here of this 8 o. I'm going to go into the very next 8 o here. Now as you do that, you want to pull this nice and tight so that your embellishments are nice and tight. And then pick up another 11 o and go between the next two 8 o's in the unit here. Get you close so you can see. I'm just placing an 11 o in between. Now if you're using an accent color instead of the same color, 11 o mine are real close. They're not exactly the same color, but they're real close. You can see them better if and it makes kind of an accent kind of a pretty element to it if you use a different color. I'm just using the same color. Now I'm going to take my 11 o and go through the next 8 o and I'm going to pick up my 11 o and go through the next 8 o here. And I'm going to avoid the 11 o I just put on. Like so. So now that closes my end makes it nice and neat. Now I'm going to go into this 8 o seed bead right here. So I'm coming out of this one, I'm going to go into this one right next to my embellishment, the one right here. And pull that tight. Now I'm going to put 11 o seed beads where you can see my thread is up where my pe Ugh, cannot speak today, where my cubes join. I want to cover that up because that's just not that pretty in my mind and this will also firm up my piece. So I'm going to pick up an 11 o I'm going to go from this 8 o straight to this 8 o and pull this down. Then I'm going to pick up another 11 o seed bead and I'm going to go from this 8 o to my crystal right here and pull this down. I don't seem to be able to handle my thread well today. Sorry, guys. Okay. I'm going to back off a little bit just so I can stay in frame now. Now I'm going to pick up another 11 o and I'm going to go in between these crystals here. So basically, all I'm doing is just placing an 11 o seed bead between my units of cubic right angle weave and I'm pulling everything tight this way. So as I place each one, I give it a little tug. And now, that was an 8 o. I want an 11 o. There we go. Pick up another 11 o. Go into the 11 o next to the crystal here, like so. Then we'll go ahead and pick up one more 11 o go into this 8 on the end here. Now we want to tighten this end like we did this end. So we're going to sew around this base unit here and put 11 o seed beads in it. So come up into this top unit bead here, pick up an 11 o and then go into the next 8 o And again, pick up an 11 o, go into the next 8 o. And again. And again. Now, 
we are on the side of our um, unit here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some embellishments here and here. And we're going to do that the same way we did the top. We're going to use the three millimeter bicone crystals. Let's get in a little closer again. I'm coming out of this 8 0 seed bead here. I'm going to pick up a 15 0 a bicone crystal, 3 millimeter, and a 15 0 I'm coming out of this side of this 8 0 I'm going to find the opposite 8 0 and go into the opposite side that I'm coming out of on this 8 0 and pull. And then again, pick up a 15 0 a bicone, and a 15 0 and then go into the opposite bead right here. Now we need to sew through to get over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down into this 8 -oh. So we're coming out of this 8 -oh right here. We're going to go down into this 8 -oh. We're going to go up into the 8 -oh between the units here. Ignore the 11 O's that we just put in as our embellishment. Go into the crystal. Don't go into those 11 O's. And then go, whoops, got my thread. And then go down into this 8 -oh. So we're just sewing through our units in the original thread path until we get to this guy right here. So now I'm right here, and I'm going to do the same thing I did here. So I'm going to pick up a 15-0 seed bead, bicone crystal, and a 15-0 seed bead, and I'm coming out of this side of this 8 -oh. I'm going to find the opposite one and go in the opposite side, like so. Pick up a 15-0, a bicone crystal, and a 15-0, and again, go into the opposite side you're coming out of. So I'm coming out of this side, I'm going to go into this 8 -oh and go into the opposite side, right there, and pull. And hopefully not tangled, there we go. Now, we're going to sew around the top here, and we're going to come down and put um, some 11 O's between here. So we're coming out of this 8 O seed bead right here. We have to get all the way back around this unit. So we're going to go through the 11 O, the 8 0 and the 11 0. We're going to sew around all the beads in this little round dude here. Okay, all the way around. And now we're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead here. There is the, whoops, yeah, I ended up on the same side. Sorry, guys. No, no, I didn't. Did I? No, I did. So I'm going to sew around a little bit more. <laughs> I'll show you what I did so that I don't confuse you. I'm going to come out of here. So when I sewed around, I came out of the same bead that I've already embellished, or actually the bottom bead. And I don't want to embellish the bottom. What I want to do is I want to have an embellishment here, an embellishment here, and here. So you'll sew around until you come out of the side that hasn't been embellished right underneath your crystals, your four millimeter crystals. So you want to come out of this 8 0 seed bead right here. It doesn't matter how many times you sew around, just make sure you end up here. Pick up a 15 0 seed bead, a four millimeter bicone, and a 15 0 seed bead, and then find your opposite 8 0 and go through it. And then pick up a 15 0 seed bead, a 4 millimeter bicone, and a 15 0 seed bead, and do the same thing again. Let's see. Come out the opposite here. So basically, what I'm trying to tell you is we just want to embellish this top, this side, and this side. The bottom that lays against our wrist, we will not embellish. All right. Now we have to sew over to this side to 
get in position to do the other half of the embellishment. So now we have to sew through this Ado seed bead. I'm coming out of this one. I'm going to sew through this one. I'll sew through my middle here, just following my original thread path, going through the crystal now. And you should be able to see on your piece where you can go and where you can't go. You don't want to cross over where your thread bridges are. You want to keep turning corners, not crossing intersections. So if you see this as an intersection, you have to turn the corner. You can't go from here to here. So let's go here, up into here. And now I'm in the Ado seed bead ready to do my next embellishment. So I'm going to pick up 15-0, a bicone crystal, and a 15-0. I'm coming out here. I'm going to go into here. <clears throat> and then again, 15-0, 3mm bicone crystal, and 15-0. And I am going to go into the opposite side here. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, we have put little 11 0 seed beads through the top side here, but we haven't done it through the top on this side. So what we need to do is we need to go down into, we're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead right here. We need to go down into this one. Just ignore that 11 0 there. Go down into this 8 0. That is your original thread path, so that's okay. Now, we are going to pick up an 11-0 seed bead and we're going to go from this 8-0 to this 8-0. And pop that 11-0 in there. Then we're going to pick up another 11-0 seed bead and we're going to go from this 8-0 to this bicone crystal. Then we're going to pick up another 11-0 seed bead and go from this crystal to this crystal. Then we're going to pick up another 11 of seed bead and go from this crystal to this crystal. And again, pick up an 11 of seed bead and go from the crystal to the 8 0. Just putting a bead in between that entire line there. And again, pick up an 11 of seed bead. Make sure I'm getting 11 O's and not 8 O's since they're the same color. I tend to mess up on that. And I put my last one in here. Now we need to go down and put in beads between this bottom embellishment that we just did. So I'm coming out of this 8 O right here. Right there. I'm going to go up into this 8 here. I'm just going to ignore this little, little 11 0. Go up into this 8 here. Ignore this 11 0 and go down into this 8 here on the side of my embellishment, right underneath my green beads here. And I'm going to pick up an 11 0. And I'm going to slide from bead to bead to bead to bead, just like we've been doing. So go into the next 8 0 and pull it together. Go into the next 8 0 and pull it together. And this is going to start to kind of curve. Oh, 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 oh. I hope I wasn't really blurred. Sorry, guys. So from 8 0 to 8 0. And now, as we pull this through, this is going to start to curve the piece a little bit. So just if I was blurred, I apologize. Just keep going with 11 0s between each unit of cubic right angle weave. So just go into the next 8 0. This pulls our units together. It hides the thread and it curves our little unit here that we're making our component to make it nice and perfect for a bracelet. Okay, so I have sewn through all of these. Now I'm going to hop up into this 8 0 seed bead here, ignoring the 11 0 right next to it. And 
and then I will go down into this 80 here, ignoring this 11 0, go down into this 80 here. And I will start picking up 11 0 seed beads. Just putting them through, just like I did on the other side. Then when I get to my last one, I'll ignore this 11 0 in the corner and pop up into the Zado. I want to make sure I've got 11 0s between everything. Yep, all four sides. And then did you see when I pulled my thread tight, how that curved and became a nice little curved component just like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around this entire top part that I closed in with the little 11 O's I'm going to go through the 11 O's and the 8 O's and sew all the way around it and then I'll tie a couple knots so I'm going to go around here and pull and it looks like a wingspan of thread was just about right for one component here it's a lot of thread. This is a thread th thirsty stitch. As I'm doing this, I'm pulling my my piece tight. So make sure it stays nice and neat. And then as you get around, grab in between the beads, grab a thread bridge right here. It's a nice one. I'll go under it. Try not to get that 15 0 in there. Do that again, since I didn't actually accomplish anything there. There we go. I've tied a knot now. I'm going to sew back up around here just to pull that knot into the end. Go around a few more to get away from my knot. And then I can get rid of my thread. Make sure everything's nice and tight, looks good. Now I'm going to grab my zapper and I'm just going to melt that thread in there. Okay. And there's your component. Go ahead and make these until you have four identical components. So I've made them all exactly the same, tied them all off, burned down the tail thread and the working thread. Now if you are big person or you're making this for a bigger person, then you may want to make five components. I am going to go ahead and use four components and this should come out to about a seven inch um, bracelet, maybe a little bit bigger than a seven inch and that will be good for me. As I want it to have some movement, but I don't want it to be huge. So we are going to go ahead and get out some of our glass pearls here. And we are going to use, so I'm going to get some six millimeter glass pearls off of this strand. And then we will need two crimp beads here. And then I am going to use three, well, let's put out three or four 80 seed beads. And then um, I'm going to change to a little bit bigger clasp, see how that works for me. And then I have a smaller clasp too. I'm going to string mine on and decide which clasp I want to use. If I need a little bit more length, I'll use this one. If I need a little less, I'll use this one. I try to gauge that. I am designing this as I make this film, so or this video, so I don't really know exactly what I want to do because I haven't strung it yet. So now I'm going to cut a 12 inch piece of my stringing wire put a little clamp on the end of it so I can begin to string my components and my pearls onto this. I'm going to start because I'm using a toggle. I want the end where I have 
this side of the toggle on to be a little bit narrower so it'll fit through my round side easier. If you have a really wide pearl underneath this end of your toggle, it doesn't work. It doesn't go through very well. So I'm going to put on, uh, let's see, probably two Edo seed beads. And then I will pick up, eh, let's see, two or three. I'll put on three Edo seed beads. And I can judge this before I crimp it off to make sure that's what I want. So I'll put on three. And then I'm going to put on a pearl. Then I'm going to pick up one of my components. Now you see your components have a hole on either side. And if you're careful, you can slide this wire through in one swoop like that. And then I'm going to pick up another pearl and then another component. And I'm just going to continue stringing these. Now you can string this any way you want. You can make this a necklace. You can make a bunch of components and make it a necklace. You may want to make it a little bit longer unit so that you don't have quite as much as a, of a curve. Or if you like the, the curve the way it is, that's fine too if you have a very small neck. Um, or like I said, you cannot tighten them quite as much when you're pulling it through. I mean, lessen your tension so that you don't have quite a steep curve and then you can make a necklace. But anyway, you can string this any way you want. You can put bicones in between. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to continue stringing mine and I will be back and show you how to clamp or crimp the ends. Excuse me. Okay, so you can, as you can see, I have strung my entire piece. I just put one pearl in between. I put one Edo seed bead on the end that I'm going to use the round side of my to toggle and I put three on the side that I'm going to use the straight toggle. Now I'm going to center this on my wire so I have enough wire to work with on either side like so. So I'll just grab a hold of the two ends and just center this. And I'm going to go ahead and clamp that one off and then I'm going to pick up a crimp bead and I'm going to slide it down on my wire here. I'm going to pick up the round side of my toggle, slide it down, and I'm going to go through the crimp bead and the Edo seed bead and I'm going to pull my wire through. And I'm just going to tighten, tighten it to the point where there's no slack in my wire. And when we put these on, normally when you're stringing, you'll leave a tiny bit of slack so your beads can move around on your wire. I don't want any slack in this one. I want it to hold it together pretty tight so it has nice form because of the way that I put the components together. I want it to stay nice and neat and strong. So I'm pulling quite a bit of tension on this and not having any slack. So now I have my crimp bead on. Let's get you down here. Oop, too close, sorry. Still too close. So I've got my crimp bead on. Now I'm going to get my crimp pliers. I want to make sure that my wires don't cross through the center of my um, crimp bead. And then in my crimp tool, I'm going to go into the second slot, the slot closest to the handles, and I'm going to slide my bead in there and I'm going to crimp it by squeezing. Now, as you can see, I have two wires encased in two little tubes. That's the way it crimps. Now I'm going to use the front divot, the divot closest to the end of the pliers, and I'm going to turn my crimp bead to its side and slide it in there, and then, in essence, push those two little tubes together. So I'm going to squeeze again. Now those two little tubes are side by side, and this is crimped nice and tight. Now I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to cut it off as close as I can to my Edo seed bead. Very dull wire cutter, sorry guys, there we go. And that is one side. Then I am going to 
grab my crimp bead. I want to see how long this is going to be, so I'm going to try it on my wrist just to see if I want to keep all three of those there. Yeah, I think I will. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab my crimp bead, slide this down, and then put on my toggle. Now, if you're not using a toggle, if you're using a um, lobster claw or something like that, then this won't look quite so big on this side. I may change my mind and not use this, but I'm going to see what it looks like. So I'm sliding down through my crimp bead again and all three of my 80 seed beads, and then I'm going to pull this through. Then I'm going to hold on to my wire here. I'm just using my round nose pliers and I'm just going to, I'm going to pull, hold on to this side and just pull this down so that I get good tension. Like I said, you don't want any slack in this one. You want it to be as tight as you can get it. And then I'm going to crimp it just like I did the other side. So I'm going to grab a hold of my crimp tool and crimp one way and then go into the top divot and crimp again. Well, darn it. Clasp is in the way. There we go. Okay this down and this is what we have it turned out really pretty you can always change your clasping if you'd like if you don't like this type of clasp you can do that you could always do this on a very strong um, elastic too and tie a nice knot and have it as a bangle just use your fifth component make a five components and put it on elastic and make a bangle like this too. That would be really pretty. Or you can use a lobster claw clasp and a little piece of chain and that way you can adjust how long your piece is also. There's lots of different ways you could clasp this, but don't be stuck with one if you don't like the way it looks or the way it functions, just change it. These components can be used in all different ways. You can string them different ways. You can do whatever you want. My main goal was to show you the component. And this is the finished product with all your components. I'll go ahead and put it on my wrist and show you what it looks like. And that's what it looks like. I think it turned out cute. Here's the clasping. See, it's a large spread of clasping. You could use one more hole component here and like I said put it on elastic. I may try that. But anyway that's what that looks like. Bye bye.